nice Teline. My name is Emeline and you're watching ET A to Z on Arts TV. Meat is a religion in Ethiopia. Ethiopian cuisine is known for its many vegetarian dishes, but meat reigns supreme. Ethiopians love it, yet millions of Orthodox believers fast throughout the year. They fast for over 180 days. That's a lot, right? During these fasting periods, people refrain from eating meat, of course, but also eggs and dairy products. It is one of the strictest religious diets in the world. It really requires self-discipline, but it also has its own health benefits. Today, we will experience both the fasting and non-fasting traditions. Follow me as I explore some of Ethiopia's finest delicacies. Let's link up with my friend Moges, who will be joining us today. Let's order some food. And I still link? And it's Nacho? Salam Nacho? Dana? 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 I have a couple of questions to ask you while they prepare our food. First of all, why did Ethiopians start eating raw meat. I've heard many different stories. Uh, we uh, start to eat uh, because of the war. Uh, we kill like goat or sheep or cow and uh, we don't cook it as a war because of the smoke or the, um, uh, the fire. So maybe th they, will, uh, they will look at the smoke and they will come to attack. They didn't want to be seen by their enemies. Exactly. How much does a kilo of meat cost in Addis Ababa? In here is like 800 bir for one kilo. It's a bit expensive here, but mostly people, they share the money and buy the cow. And after they kill the cow, they share the meat. So that meat, it can be for families. It makes it more affordable for the people. Yeah. What sorts of meat do, do you eat? Uh, we eat uh, mostly uh, goats and cow and sheep. Which one is your favorite? Uh, my favorite is like cow. It's really nice. I am addicted with kurt from that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Do Ethiopians eat meat only on special occasions? Yeah, you can say. It's a special occasion or in a weekend. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Thank you. These fresh chunks of raw meat are what Ethiopians call urt. Mogis, how do we eat urt? As you saw, but for me and you, we can cut in like that. You can see how it's cut. Is she? Uh, mostly, man is cut. We do like this. Okay. You can try it, this. And this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, to make sharp to cut. Is she? Yeah, so I can take one here. We do like this. Okay. And we do. You see, we cut. Okay. Yeah. I've always been told that there is a different way of cutting the meat, whether you are a man or a woman. Is that true? Before, only man will cut this and feed uh, his wife or his uh, friend. But nowadays, a woman also, they cut. So that means yeah. that I can try to cut the meat as well. Sure. I've seen that sometimes uh -huh. some men are just biting down uh -huh. on a large piece of meat, holding it with one hand yeah. and cutting it with the other. Not that much in Addis, but if you go to the south, it's always like that. I can show you I'm not that perfect with that. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you see, you can't do. 
Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> yeah, but this you don't use uh, the spicy. Ishi. But more is like with uh, caramel that you put it Ishi. and with the spicy. So delicious. Ishi, <laughs> so let's eat. Okay. You try to how to cut. Ishi. Maybe you can have this is very soft. This one? Yeah, very soft and take care of your hand. Ishi. You know, to cut. You see? You have to try uh, to drink like a taji. Yeah? You uh -huh. put your hand like this. And the Z? Yeah, it's similar. Like. Ah, gobas. Basma, manchi gobas nish. Hama saganalo. Ginti nish kabdal. Ah, wine. Ginti lik no. So here are the spicy. You can use uh, all of them. So this is meat meat. Ah? Yeah, meat meat. Ah. This is awaze. Ah, awaze, ah, oh. And this is mustard. How do you call it again? Sanafich. But bon appetit. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> but uh, you can use the injera also when you eat it. It's like this is very good. You see? You touch from here, here also. Oh. Onjono. Injera is a staple in Ethiopian cuisine. But don't worry, we will be devoting one episode on it. Mm. Yeah. So how do you call the fat part? We call it like choma. 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 You try. Choma. Choma. I will get some more caramella. Zare, we ate a lot of raw meat. And I'm not quite sure it's part of a very healthy diet. In France, we eat raw meat too. The okay. name of the dish is steak tartare. But okay. I try to avoid eating it too often because I'm afraid of getting tapeworms. Oh, and right. I'm sure you have the same concerns, right? Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's called koso. Mm -hmm. uh, so the koso, uh, to kill the bacteria from the meat, mm -hmm. we can use here like the awaze. That means that the spices are supposed to kill the bacteria. Exactly, yeah. So that means that I'm not going to get sick. For sure, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it. Uh, don't think it that I will be sick. You just enjoy it and forget it about the koso. Even if you uh, if you have the koso, we have a special drink called areki. You can drink, so it kills the bacteria. Here in Ethiopia, some people are just addicted to raw meat. Fortunately, the fasting periods help balance their diets. Our best advice would be to eat raw meat responsibly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fasting doesn't mean depriving oneself food-wise, it's actually quite the opposite. During fasting periods, called on, Ethiopian Orthodox believers refrain from eating animal products. Their diet becomes essentially vegan, even though some people eat fish. Follow me to one of my favorite restaurants in Addis, Dash & Terara, to taste a fasting specialty adored by many. Ethiopians eat with their hands, therefore, it's essential to practice good hygiene and wash your hands. Thank you. Wow, it looks delicious! People fast on Wednesdays and Fridays throughout most of the year, but also during several fasting seasons. Some of them are mandatory and prescribed by the church, such as Abitzom, which is the longest and lasts for 55 days before Easter. Others are optional, such as the one observed during the shortest month of the Ethiopian calendar, Pagume, that precedes the Ethiopian New Year. Observant Christians, including monks and priests, 
fast for more than 250 days per year. This Ethiopian vegetarian platter is called Yetzom Beyeinetu. The dish is served on the same spongy flatbread that we ate earlier with mogis and topped with several kinds of stews and vegetables. Here we have shiro, a chickpea stew that can be soupy or very thick depending on your preference, messer, uh, which is a lentil stew, gomen, which are colored greens, and kaiser, um, which is made of uh, potatoes and beetroots. <laughs> to eat it, you just need to tear off some bits of injera and to scoop the sauces with it. I'm a second Some of the stews are spicy, others are not, but you can always add more spice to it. For example, here you have mitmita, which is a very aromatic spice blend that we tried earlier with moges to season our meat. Here we have what Ethiopians call karia. I have to warn you, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's really spicy. What I love about Ethiopian culture is the fact that people eat together from the same plate. They even have this tradition of feeding each other that they call gursha. Mm. Let me have a little bit more karia. Now you know that fasting is deeply ingrained in the lives of millions of Ethiopian Orthodox believers. And of course, it's not only about food. According to observant Christians, it's a privileged moment to pray and get closer to God. It's also regarded as a form of sacrifice. Another benefit is the fact that you're reducing your meat consumption and eating a wide range of vegetables. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of ETA to Z. See you all next time.